Alrighty, in today's video, I'm going to use notion formulas to create the top five numbers in a relation. I'm going to be using the index formula function to output the top five highest numbers that are connected to another database via a relation. In my example, I have many tasks related to a project. As you can see, I have a number property and I will be outputting the top five highest numbers in this list via form today. So let's get started. We're going to add a formula and we want to output the top five numbers. In today's example, we'll just be using a number property to illustrate order and output numerically. I think you could easily manipulate other properties using the same formula function that I'll be sharing today. Because we'll be using the index formula function, this also means that not only can you output your top five, but if you wanted to output your your fifth best, your 10th best, or 15th best numbers or relations in relation to a project, for example. In our case, you could do that as well using the index formula. We're going to be using the let's formula function today, and we're going to be adding a few variables so that we can sort of minimize the number of times that we create duplicate formula lines like we might have had to do in the past with Notion Formulas 1.0. I think uh, the more that you dig into this video, the more you'll understand what I'm talking about. Let's get started here. We're going to be using the let's formula. I like to use shift enter and create two indentations and then close the formula. So you kind of lose that error in the beginning. I'm going to be zooming in a little bit. Alrighty, we are going to be naming two variables to sort of make it easier for ourselves. And again, to minimize the number of times we have to write the same thing over and over again. Because we're going to be creating top five entries, we want to create the list in which we are manipulating the top five entries from. We're going to be starting with obviously the map function, but in the let's formula function, we need to start with the naming of a variable. In this case, we can call it index. I'm going to be naming the variable index, and now I can sort of continue to write what it means. Again, because we are pulling a list from the relations within a property, we're going to be starting with the map function. With the map function, we have to specify the relations. In this case, it's going to be all the task relations that are related to the project, and we separate that via comma. If we look at this example that Notion conveniently provides, it tells you how you need to structure the formula function for it to work properly. We've specified the relation, and now we need to express the property that we want to use within the relation itself. That's with the current property, like shown here. And we're going to separate that with a comma to include that. We're going to start with current, and that's basically our way of saying this is what we are going to be manipulating, and it's basically like our dummy or x variable that we want to extract from this relation. Because we're doing the top five numbers, so we need to add current dot, and then notice when you do that, all the properties show up from the task database that the project is relationally connected to. In this case, we're going to be using the number so we can type it or we can also just click on it. We can close that. And because we are naming and defining this variable, we need to separate it with a comma. And because it's a let's formula, we've finished the defining portion of the formula function and now need to output it via its relation with the variable that we just named. We can do that by just calling the variable that we just find. In this case, we just type index because that is what we've labeled it. So when we click on done, we can see that the top five numbers, although it's titled that way, it's not. It's We've created that list of all tasks and their related numbers. We scroll to here, click on that, notice how those line up. So because we are seeking the top five numbers and we are going to index via the sorted list, we are going to add to this map function that we just called. The reason why I just named it and outputted it for now is so that now we can just stack onto the formula knowing that whatever we add is what breaks the formula. And so we don't need to try to output everything at once and we can slowly work up to what we're building. So we're going to want to sort it. So we're going to use dot notation and maybe we can add a new line and we can do dot sort open and close. So now that numbered list is ordered from lowest to highest. Again, because we are trying to index the top five of those numbers, we might want to reverse the order of this sort. And so we can do shift enter dot reverse open and close. And now we have the list 
organized in highest to lowest order. We've just reversed the order sort. So now that we've sort of created our list that we're going to be indexing from to output our top five highest numbers, we are going to go a little further with naming of variables. So we've called index and named it. We've added these two lines and that comma. Maybe it's a little confusing, so we'll just move it there. And we're going to add another variable titled list. And what this list is going to be the sort of index numbers that we want to reference so that when we're outputting our top five numbers, we can reduce the number of times that we have to reference it. And this is also so that if we want to output the incremented top levels, like the, the fifth highest, the 10th highest, the 15th highest, or if you wanted to do the bottom, the 50th, the first, right? If you wanted to sort of strategically output a different index within a series of relational database properties and entries, this list can be helpful to um, optimize that. Obviously, because we are going to create top five, we are going to create a list titled zero, one, two, three, and four. We're going to just define it and then close it out with a comma. So now the index just outputs. In our case, if we want to do index plus list, we see that the list just adds to other lists we've created through the properties. So that's exactly how you want to name that variable. And the reason why we're starting with zero in this case is because when you do use the index formula function within Notion Formulas 2.0, the first entry starts at index zero, and then it goes from there. So index one would be the second number within a list. The second index would be the third number within that list. And so I'll show you in just a sec why we've created this list so that if we do ever want to change how we want to index the numbers, this is flexible and more malleable with what you might be looking for. How we're going to go do that now that we've named a list is let's output first or highest number within the task relations. Let's just create a simple out output called first, add a colon, maybe a space. Now that we have our first text, we want to manipulate the list that we just created where we've organized it from highest to lowest. Another formula function that we're going to be introducing that I sort of spaced on is the at formula. And that is basically the way to index a list. And so we're going to be using dot notation for dot. And as you can see, when you click on dot, it lists out all of these different dot notation formula functions that we can use, right? And it's conveniently tells you sort of a the way that you can use it and the example they've given you to illustrate. In our case, we're going to use at and the at formula function basically defines the order in which that number appears within comma delimited list. Like we've just created within this list where we've named it from zero to four, the zero within the at formula function means that you want to see the first or highest level item within that list. So we're going to click zero and now we have that output of first equals nine. We've just outputted the very highest number of this list that we're extracting from that we've created by referencing the order of the number properties in these task entries. As you can imagine, we could probably rinse and repeat this process. So now that we have our index properly showing our top number within that list that we've created, let's add a little formatting that I've introduced in past videos where we can add a plus, Add a quote, we want to do backwards slash n, close quote. And now when we add a second line, for example, and say second, we see that outputted as a new line, as you can see here. In this field, you can't really see it, but when you go to the actual formula output, it appears like that. As you can imagine, you can just keep doing this index dot at one plus slash. So as you can imagine, you can just do that five times. But the reason why I've created this list from the beginning is so that if we ever want to responsively change the order of the list without having to manually change it here, we can actually just reference the index of the list so that we can populate similarly here. But because we're naming it as a variable, we can change the variable instead of manually changing it here. So I'll show you what that looks like. I will add a third and we're going to still keep the index dot at but instead of the manual number that we are going to specify, we are going to specify the index of the list here. So what we can actually do is we can actually specify the list and then add another at formula, open it up. And because we're looking at 
the third, we are going to use two. And because it's a formula function within a formula function, we're going to need to add that, that third number. And as you can, if you can recall correctly, six is the third highest number in this list. So basically what we're doing now is extracting the number that we spit out within this list. In our case, we're just saying third number within this list, which is basically identical to that same number. In our case, I just made this so that in case you wanted to increment your top numbers, all you have to do is change these numbers and then you can sort of configure how these indexes show. What we can do here is just copy paste, do that. And again, this would be zero, do that this would be one and we still have those same outputs. Now we, what we can do is we can copy that whole line of text, paste it, title it fourth, title this three, and there we have it. Let's add another, our final layer, fifth and four. So now when we click on done, we see each of these numbers pop out in a new line and it looks just like that. Again, let's say if we wanted to do the first, the fifth, tenth, 15th and 20th order of list, we can just change these numbers. So we would change this to, let's make it the fifth highest. And then we could change this to the 10th highest. And now we can do the 15th. And now we can do the 20th. What that basically does is I've incremented the numbers that I want to show based on intervals of five. So I want to show the fifth highest number, the 10th highest number, the 15th highest number, and 20th highest number without having to change these indexes. In our case, because we only have seven of these related numbers, these other things don't really count. But if we were to just say we wanted to skip the first and second one, we could just do this. In this case, we see the first highest, we're gonna miss the second and third highest. And so obviously we would need to change the text output here, but I'm just showing you how you can sort of create your top incremented lists via using your own custom list that you reference with a nested at formula function that we've specified here. If you really wanted to, you could add some styling. We could do dot style and bold, for example, or actually style B so that that number stands out. If you want to explore my other videos, I show you various ways to use these very similar formula functions in other ways. So thanks for sticking around and watching through this whole video. Hopefully you're able to implement this at formula function so that we can start to index and create lists for the highest or lowest numbers as well as other manipulations using variables that we can name using the let's function. I've created this list to show you that you can create responsive versions of how you want to index if you choose to do so, and a little bit of styling and line breaking to add that little pizzazz. Like and subscribe like always, and I'll see you in the next one.